Okay, so today we're going to start talking about uh, uh, charts in Excel. It's one of the key components that makes Excel such a powerful program. Uh, charts along with functions, in my opinion, are the two main features uh, that give Excel its enduring strength. Now, the reason that um, charts in Excel are so powerful and compelling is that oftentimes when you look at a bunch of numbers, you really can't truly grasp the meaning of what the numbers are telling you. But if you see a visual representation of these numbers, it can often become much more meaningful when you see it portrayed that way as a graphic than it, compared to just looking at a bunch of numbers. So that is why uh, charts in Excel uh, have become so popular and so compelling. So we'll talk just a little bit about charts in general, and then we'll go into some examples of specific charts and how and why you would use them. So uh, there's different types of charts in Excel, many different types. We'll talk about some of the more frequently used ones here and show you just generally how to get in to use them. So uh, we'll start off with a pie chart. A pie chart is best used to show how values contribute to the whole or sum total of all the values. So it shows how one value will contribute to the 100% of all the values. A bar chart is a horizontal, horizontal bar is representing how various data types compare to each other. A column chart is the same as a bar chart, but they're vertical bars representing how various data values compare to each other. They're up and down, uh, whereas a bar chart are horizontal. Uh, line charts are best used to show how values change over time. Area chart is much like a line chart. It just has a filled in version underneath the line for further emphasis. And then lastly, combo charts are used to show different types, uh, different sets of values at the same time, but in one chart. So in order to get into any charts, uh, you have to select your data. And then typically you'll go to the insert tab and here's the whole chart section over here. Now you can let Excel recommend what kind of a chart you should use based upon the data that you've chosen and highlighted, or you can go in and pick whatever type you use, you want to use yourself. So if we just highlight these three numbers here, just to illustrate, uh, if you click on recommended charts, you get two tabs in here, recommended charts and all charts. So all charts shows you a nice summary of all the different chart types. And several of these chart types have different subclassifications within them. Like, for example, a column chart has different types. A clustered stat column, 100% stat column, 3D clustered column, 3D stat column, and a 3D column. And if you look at a line chart, there's different types in there also. So there's really a lot of different ways to um, pick out the chart type that you want. Uh, pie chart, there's a regular pie chart and a 3D pie chart and a couple other ones here too. Here's the combo chart down here. We'll get into that a little bit later. And uh, here's the line chart here also. So you can see all the charts nicely summarized on this screen here. If you cancel out of this, you can pick and choose each chart type that you like from right here also. So more than one way to get in and select your chart. Okay, uh, so with that in mind, uh, we will start off by showing you uh, how a bar chart, I'm sorry, a pie chart works. Bit of information. So all of this information here would not be appropriate. You can only use one column of this information and you could use a column for labels. So uh, right now we want to focus on uh, this column here and the number of cases in each of these states. So we're going to highlight that information and we're going to come up to the insert tab and we know we want to use a pie chart and a 3D pie chart looks much better in my opinion than a 2D pie chart. Now here you have an option on the drop down for a 3D pie chart but notice if you click over here on recommended charts if you're not sure which one to use and you see the pie chart you click on that it will not give you the option for a 3D pie chart. It'll just give you a basic uh, pie chart. 
So in this situation, you would not want to use the recommended charts. You would want to uh, know which chart you want. Come in over here and come right down. Choose 3D pie chart. And there it is. So now you have your chart inserted into the worksheet based upon the information over here in the table. Now I want to show you that this is a uh, live link between the worksheet and the information over here. Imagine if I change this 140,386 to 70,000. You can see how it reduced the size of this piece of the pie here. So let's go back, three, eight, six, put it back in. Now, uh, so the chart here can be moved anywhere you like on the worksheet. It can also be resized by dragging the sizing handles and moving it around. Now, if your table were much bigger, perhaps a chart would not fit well on this worksheet. So you have the option to move your chart to a different worksheet, a standalone worksheet. Notice down here I created a pie chart moved sheet. Right now it's empty. If we come back in here to where the chart is, we click on the chart. Uh, when you do click on a chart, you will get something up here called Chart Tools, uh, a new entry onto the ribbon with two sub ribbons, uh, the design chart tools design chart tools format. If you click on the design over here at the end, there's an option to move the chart. So we're going to click on that and it'll let you move it to a different sheet. So if you, you can move it to a new sheet that you can make right here, or you can move it to a pre-existing sheet. And there's the pie chart move sheet that we created in advance. So if we say, okay, uh, notice that it moves it over here to its own sheet and it's been moved off of uh, the original pie chart uh, sheet. But um, we are not going to do that for now. I'm going to come back here. I'm going to delete it off of here. I'm going to come back in here, uh, recreate the pie chart, and we're going to work with it on this sheet right here. I just wanted to show you how you can move it to a different worksheet if needed. So we're going to drag it over here. Uh, we're going to make it a little bit bigger. And we are going to show you how you can customize this pie chart. Okay, let's take a look at a bar chart example now. So I've got a simple uh, table here uh, with some website visitors, year 2019 by month. Here's the months. Here's the visitors. Notice we've got a total uh, row on the bottom here. So uh, this would be a good uh, application for a bar chart. Now, when you select the information for a bar chart, you want to make sure that you exclude total rows. Totals do not uh, mix well in charts. So you want to just get everything that's not showing a total. So you'll highlight everything down to here. Whoops. Come to the insert tab. We'll go to the column and bar chart option here and we'll go down and we'll pick out a 3D cluster bar chart. Make it a little bigger. So there we go. We got all the months over here. We've got the number of visitors along the horizontal axis here. And you can go in just like before, change the title, make it um, more meaningful. We could put some more uh, labels on these axes here. If you clicked on the table, went into the design tab, add chart element, or you could go over here and you want to put axis titles. So you could put one on the vertical axis over here and one on the horizontal axis. So if you clicked on that, you could come in here and you could say visitors. And of course you could um, format this just like we showed you before. And then you could do the same thing over here. It's a little trickier on these 
vertical ones uh, okay months I'm gonna move it a little bit highlight it bold it give it the same okay so there's your uh, basic bar chart and of course everything else that we saw still applies if you wanted to change the style you go up to the chart tools design tab start playing around with different styles here see what works best for you if you want to change the colors notice that the colors will change for every bar consistently if you don't like that and say you wanted to have independent <coughs> colors for each bar you could do that too <coughs> excuse me uh, you could come over here click once to select all the bars then click one more time to select a particular bar go to the format tab <coughs> Go to shape fill and here you can pick out different colors for each bar so there's that one there and that one there that one there and so forth so you have a lot of control over how these individual bars can look uh, you have the same control when you double click on a Part of the chart that gives you the ability to format that area uh, you still have uh, access to your styles over here you can still filter the information if you wanted to get rid of uh, February and March apply you could get rid of some of the months you could add them back in easily and so forth now you could also move this to a different uh, location you can move it to a new uh, worksheet you can click on new sheet give it a name and it'll create one i don't have one already created but we're gonna we're not gonna do that now uh, one thing that i think i'd like to do here is give it a fill the background fill something that makes it look kind of nice okay there we go so uh, this is how a bar chart would look also i wanted to show you that you could change your chart type in midstream if you decide you don't want a bar chart but you want a column chart you could do that right here by choosing a column chart and then choosing the different types of column charts or any other type chart that you want uh, you could switch the column and the row sometimes this makes sense to switch the months down to here and the visitors over to here but it doesn't always make sense in this case it doesn't really make sense okay and then of course uh, we have the quick layouts over here uh, you can add chart elements uh, legends anything else that you want to add can all be done over here uh, you go back to the format tab and uh, you actually have some control over the outline of the different shapes that you highlight and you can apply apply effects to the uh, different bars on this thing also so that is a easy application of a bar chart for you okay now let's take a look at a column chart demo remember a column chart are vertical bars representing how various data values compare to each other so uh, what I did is I brought in this table from the bar chart over here this table here brought it into the column chart example I added another line uh, on the header here but all this information is the same I want to show you that this could easily be used as a column chart as well as a bar chart which is what we did before so uh, but I also want to show you why you would not want to include total information in your chart and then after that we're going to use this chart up here which has two sets of information that are related and show you why this would be a better example of a column chart but anyway let's start down here so I'm going to highlight everything including the total row we're going to go up to the insert tab we're going to go over here and let's do a 3d clustered column so now when you put that in you can see how each monthly total is vastly reduced in size because uh, the chart has been 
reapportioned to accommodate the total value over here, which makes all these uh, much, much smaller. So this is one reason why you don't want to include a total in your chart. So let's get rid of this guy here, go back, highlight everything, excluding the total. Go back and put in a 3D column chart. So now you can see each monthly value shows up much nicer because the total is not on the graph to skew uh, all these column sizes. Okay, so you could go in uh, easily here and change the chart type uh, to different types of columns. We use a clustered column. Here's a stack column, 100% stack column, passes, and so forth. But this passes. really doesn't matter if you only have one piece of information here. So we'll just go back to the clustered column and say OK. Now, of course, you have all the um, formatting options available that you do uh, with all the other chart types, but we'll not get into that yet. I'm going to get rid of this guy here. And we are going to focus instead on this uh, bit of information up here. So we have two pieces of information that we want to show that are related to each other. We want to show the first, second, third, and fourth quarter sales. And we have it broken down by regions of the country also. So this could show nicely on a, a 3D clustered column chart or a different type of a column chart. Anyway, let's highlight all this. Remember, we're not going to include the total information. Now we're going to come back up here, and we're going to go, and let's try uh, a 3D clustered column. Now, if you look at this, it shows you uh, four groups left to right. Each group represents a different region of the country. And then within those regions, you have the different quarters. And the quarters are color-coded, as you can see by the legend on the bottom. Okay, if you move over here to a 3D stack column, you have, once again, the four different quarters, but the four different regions, I should say, but the quarters uh, for the year are shown stacked on each column. So if you look at this here, this represents all the west sales, the north sales, south sales, east sales, and then each section here represents uh, one of the quarters of the year. So this is uh, another way to portray it. If we come back in here and we change chart type and we go to a 100% stat column, it would look something like that. I prefer the 3D ones, the 3D stat column, the 3D column. This one is kind of interesting. It shows you It shows you a different row in three-dimensional view for each of the four quarters. So you can see broken down by region. So you can see here's the first quarter by region, second quarter, third quarter, and fourth quarter. So this is just another way to look at your information. And of course, uh, we have all of the different formatting options, including changing colors and quick layout. So once again, you can play with this, see which one works the best for you. You can go in and add uh, chart elements. The data call out is always a good one, but here it's a little bit uh, too clustered, too congested. So you would want to see which one works the best for you. So this is a chart title, don't forget if you double click on any of these parts here, it opens up more formatting options over here. If you wanted to have a solid fill, you could come in here, uh, change your color, and then of course you could change your title, you could reprogram your access names, and all those fun things. If you right click, you get more choices here, your fill choices, your outline choices. So. All of the same choices as on all of the other charts. Okay, now we're going to take a look at a line chart. 
Uh, if you remember, a line chart is used to show how values change over time. That is, without a doubt, the best use of a line chart. So I created a little um, table here with some information showing how newspaper sales in millions have changed from the year 2000 to the present. Now, we all know that newspapers have been in trouble for a long time, so their sales have been uh, basically dropping year in and year out. So this would be a good candidate for a line chart. So uh, let's highlight this information here and come up here, insert, and there's a line chart. So let's go with a 2D line chart. So now look what happens. Uh, when we do this, we, it thinks we have two different series of information. Here's the line that shows the progression of the sales trending basically downward, except for this little glitch right here, which represents these two years right there. But it thinks that the years are another series here. And it doesn't really have the years showing properly on the bottom here, uh, on the bottom horizontal axis. So we could click on this and delete it, but then we still have a problem with the axis down here. So uh, I have to show you another way to build this table. You're kind of going to build it in reverse to make it more meaningful because uh, we kind of faked Excel out here a little bit. So I'm going to highlight this thing. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to put the shell down for the line chart, and then we're going to populate it after we get the shell. So without even having selected anything over here. Let's just uh, insert and go up here in a 2D line. Now you can see we've got nothing because we didn't select any information over here to build the line chart with. So we have to kind of work in reverse to get the information in from our table of information over here. So we've got to right click and we have to click on select data. So uh, this is a little bit different, but uh, it's good that you learn how to do this. So we have to add the uh, legend entries, and the legend entries are going to be the values of the newspaper sales. So we have to click on Add. The series name, you can just click right up here, it's Sales. And then the series value, we're going to highlight that, and we're going to just click in here and drag down. Okay, we're going to say OK. There you can see it on the map there on the ch on the chart. But now we need to work on the bottom part here, getting the years in. So we've got to come over here and click on Edit. And the axis label range, we're going to click right in here and drag down to 2020 and say OK. OK. And now you can see we've got the year showing in there also. If you click here, and you go up to change chart type and you go to uh, line chart with markers instead of a regular line chart, it'll show you where all the year points are. Now, you might want to put a legend down here to show what this is. So if you come over here and uh, you say add an axis title, you could come down here. Highlight this, say year, year 2000 to 2020. Of course, then you can format it and do all those fun things by coming up here. And this one over here, it's pretty self explanatory that these are sales, uh, but you could. Highlight it, type in sales, come back up here, bold it, so it matches the other axis, make it a bit smaller. Doesn't really want to shrink down too much, but you get the idea. Now, of course, you can come in here, uh, change this to be more indicative of what the information is. Uh, 
2020 through 2000 0, 0, 0, 0 through 2020. 0, 0, 0. Move it, highlight it, bold it, make it whatever color you want. Okay, and then of course we have all the same options where you could go up here to the Format and Design tab and make all the changes. If you didn't like this line right here, uh, you'd have to go into the Design tab, change colors, and then you could get some different uh, line types. And then of course, you know, whoops, thought I changed that line. And then, of course, you have the option to double-click on all the different parts of it and change all these things that we know about. The fill, let's change the fill, make it look a little nicer. Okay, so there you have an example of a line chart. We had to go in and kind of build it in reverse because when we first put it out there, Excel thought that we had two series here. The sales series and the year series, but the years are not a series. The years are just representing the horizontal axis. So I showed you how to uh, build it in reverse. First, we put a blank shell out there, and then we right-clicked on it. And we went in to select the data. And that's where uh, we went to add the first series here, which was the sales. We picked this for the series name, and then we just selected on down through all these values. And then, of course, we did the same thing for the axis here. Uh, we clicked on this, and we dragged on down through the years, and that is what built our horizontal axis for us. So there you have an example of a line chart with a little bit more advanced processing. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Okay, now we're going to show you how a combo chart works. So we have some information here, and this might look familiar. Uh, it came from the pie chart, the demo. It's the same information. We're going to build it in the combo chart. Now, you use a combo chart not very often, but when you have to show or want to show two different types of data on the same chart, this is where you'd use a combo chart. Remember, we had a column chart over here where we had two different types of data, but they were all related. Uh, the four quarters of sales, and broken down by region. So that really wasn't the same as a combo chart. On the combo chart, we're going to represent two entirely different pieces of information. So what we want to do, uh, we want to represent this information right here, which we originally represented on a pie chart. And then we also want to represent this last column over here, percent fatalities by each state. We're ignoring this column right here. So this is a good use for a combo chart. So we've got our information uh, selected and we will come to insert recommended charts. Click on all charts. Go to the bottom. There's your combo chart. Now the first one here, the clustered column line chart, you can see uh, the percent fatalities is going to be so small that it's not going to show up hardly here at all. So you need to look around. If you choose the clustered column, Line on secondary axis, that is much better, and we'll choose that. So now uh, we've got something that looks much more meaningful. You can see we've got each state showing uh, their cases on the bar chart here, the column chart actually, I should say. And the percent fatalities are showing over here on this line chart. So we can come in here. Change this uh, so over here. Okay, now if you want to put some uh, more labels on this line here, you would go up into Chart Tools, Design, go to Add Chart Element, uh, Data Labels, 
and you might want to go with something like this which puts the values for each one on there you could also go um, here which puts the values on both of them well they're on the column chart this way too but they're over the column so this is a good choice right here outside in so that makes pretty good sense now don't forget you could double click here format your chart area uh, change your fill pick out a fill color you could actually come in here and play with the border you want to put a solid line border you want to make it a bigger border change the border color so you have all the amazing options that you do with everything else if you want to change the background here uh, double click the plot area solid fill let's try a gradient fill that looks pretty good you can go in you can play with the gradients on here so once again you have dozens of different customization options uh, like you do on all the different charts so this is when you would use a combo chart when you want to show more than two pieces of information on the same chart it's not often you'd want to use this but it's nice to know how to do it when you do want to use it okay so there you go combo chart demo